Next treatment is the seven stages of Spencer. This will take us to all the motions of the patient's shoulder motion, such as extension, flexion, compression with circumduction, distraction with circumduction, adduction with external rotation, abduction with internal rotation, purely internal rotation, and deltoid traction. After we've established a restrictive motion for the patient, for instance, if the patient has a decreased motion with extension, you're going to establish a st stabilization fulcrum on the patient's shoulder on the acromioclavicular joint while taking the patient further into an extension motion. Once you get to that restrictive barrier, you could gently articulate the patient by gently springing the patient further into extension. After you get to that barrier, ask the patient to push gently forward against you. Push, two, three, four, five. Turning it into a muscle energy. Once again, taking to a further barrier, and again push. Two, three, four, five. Relax. And one last time, push. Two, three, four, five. Relax. And final stretch. And then for a flexion dysfunction, you can still hold on the patient's shoulder here for st stabilization as you take that patient into a further flexion barrier. Once they get to that barrier, you can ask the patient to push their shoulder forward towards you. Push, two, three, four, five. Relax as you gently spring further back. Afterwards, you can, can, you can proceed with a circumduction with compression. So you're still adding a stabilization force on the patient's acromioclavicular joint while you compress down on the patient's shoulder and do small circular motions to help articulate and mobilize the patient's shoulder. This is good for patients with degenerative joint disease of the shoulder as well as for frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis of the shoulder joint. After we perform the compression with circumduction, then we can do a, an extension or a traction with circumduction. You have the patient extend out their elbow while you add a traction force on that shoulder. And once again, gently doing small, medium, and large circular motion on the patient's shoulder while going clockwise and then going counterclockwise for the patient's shoulder joint. Next motion would be a coupled motion of abduction and external rotation or internal rotation. You have the patient grab onto your forearm while still stabilizing at that shoulder and then you press down on the patient's elbow to induce an adduction force with external rotation. Once you take that patient to a restrictive barrier, you ask the patient to push up gently against your restrictive force and relax and you take it further into a springing motion. One more time, push and relax, which can be done for three to five seconds, for three to five times. Next one would be an abduction with internal rotation. Still with the patient holding onto your forearm while, the patient, while stabilizing the patient's shoulder at the AC joint, you take the patient into an abduction motion, which also couples with internal rotation of that shoulder. Once you reach a restrictive barrier, you ask the patient to push down against you three to five times for three to five seconds and relax while gently springing to the next barrier. And again, push and relax three to five times and final stretch. The next one is for pure internal rotation. If your patient has trouble with putting their hand behind their back, anything that you can basically help induce an internal rotation. Be careful with this as 
any patients with history of shoulder dislocation, this may be very uncomfortable for them. So you take a patient's hand behind their, their back and you take their elbow towards you with a small amount of force, usually two fingers should be adequate. And once you get to that restrictive barrier, ask the patient to push against your fingers towards here. Three to five times for three to five seconds. And relax, take it a little bit further into that restrictive barrier. And again, push and relax, good. Last one is called a traction of the deltoid. Basically, you have the patient extend their shoulder and elbow and rest it on your shoulder so that you can induce a downward and upward motion on the patient's deltoid muscle for increased soft tissue motions of the deltoid as well as ligaments around the shoulder. And you may want to proceed with this for at least 30 seconds to increase motion and fluid mobility of the shoulder joint.